This is Friday, July 27th. Our website is back up. Server, the new server is running. I have been working non-stop at this for four days straight. So I haven't really done anything more with my Necron stuff until last night. So this is gonna be a vlog. I'm gonna talk about the Necron Doom Scythe. Because I want to basically track my progress of how I'm going to paint my Doom Scythe. Now before I go any further, for those of you who aren't familiar with my painting style, my painting style is basically find the fastest possible way to paint something that still looks good on the table. So I go for a tabletop level, and I realize that that's debatable what tabletop means, because I always get comments saying, Matthew, your stuff is beyond tabletop. And I think that's mainly because you're seeing them on video and you're not seeing them in person. Because most people that see them in person will agree that they look good at arm's length. And when you look really closely, you can start to see all the, the little details and mistakes. So the, the problem I'm having with these Doom Scythes, um, first off, I'm not sure if I recommend this, but it might be a good idea. I haven't, I haven't fully done these yet, so I can't really say. Before you attach this piece, it would be easier if you're gonna paint these little pieces gray, or the bolt gun metal, or whatever the new one is. Uh, what's the new one? Iron Breaker is the new Games Workshop bolt gun metal. Um, so you'd paint all that bolt gun metal and then attach this piece. Now the problem with that for me is that I like to give them a shading. I, I spray them black and then I shade them with a, a blue from the Army, paint, uh, Army Painter um, spray paint set. So you can kind of see that. I know that the details aren't gonna be perfect in this video. So you can kind of see the shading with that. But the problem is, with my ghost arcs, doomsday arcs, monoliths, I did this and then I outlined everything, just like you see in the product packaging. So if you look at the product packaging really closely, you can see that they've basically highlighted every single edge. And I did that with my ghost arcs and they look fine on camera, but when you actually look at them closely, it's very sloppy. And it's not because I rushed it, it's because I simply can't do it well. I just don't have the skill to really be able to go along and highlight. The edges aren't too hard because you can just put your brush sideways like this and run it along it. But then when you're trying to do everything else, it just doesn't look good. And like the monoliths, my monoliths look good from a distance. And then when you look really closely, you see how sloppy they actually are. So I wasn't really happy with that. So I am determined to figure out a different way to paint these doom size. And you are going to watch his progress. Well, you don't have to watch. I am going to record my progress and my insights. So yesterday at 2.30, I finally finished all the server updates. And I decided I was going to paint my monoliths. And so I'm in, or monoliths, doom size. Or they're both doom size and night size because because you can stick whatever you want on the bottom. And so you've already seen how I base them. And so I've tried a few different things. At first, I tried this, where I painted the circles a, a lighter color. I think I used uh, Techless Blue, Games Workshop Techless Blue. Getting used to all the new colors there. Only problem is it kind of looks like it's polka dotted. So I don't know if I really like that. In fact, I know I don't really like that. And you're seeing this after I actually put a bit of lighter spray paint over the whole thing because before it was like very bright and then very dark beside it. See, the challenge is we have these big open areas. And if you don't do anything to those big open areas, then the model doesn't look like it's finished being painted. And I don't want that. I want it to look like it's finished, even if it doesn't have super detail on it. So I, you know, it, it, I think it looks good, the blue that I put on the guns. And then, of course, the blue that's on the little orb there. Um, but this whole polka dot thing just isn't working. And, and I just, like I said, I'm avoiding trying to, to draw out all these lines. So then my next idea was, well, why don't I spray paint it a brighter blue and then wash it with the new, well, it's not a wash, it's a shade now, the Nuln Oil. This is basically your new Bata Black. And the problem is this is what it ends up looking like. And don't worry that these don't look good because I'm just gonna respray that, spray them and start from scratch. Um, sure, it'll put a couple layers of paint on it, but I'm not as picky as some. So this just doesn't, it doesn't look good. It actually looks sloppy for one thing, and another thing is it still looks like it needs a highlight. And so then I tried a dry brush, which I didn't think would work really well on a flat surface because that's not what dry brushing is for, but I wanted to try all my different options. And I'm not sure if this one's gonna work, turn out really well on camera, but this is what this one looks like. And so I was right. For one thing, it doesn't look complete. And another thing is it looks sloppy as you get the lines from the dry brush across these big flat surfaces. So that's not gonna work. 
So that was my three different attempts. And you can give suggestions on what I can do, but the problem is I'm planning on getting these all done today. So by the time you watch this video, they'll probably already be done. And the reason I wanna find a really fast way to do these is because I plan, if this works out, of adding six more of these to my collection for a total of 12. Not because I'll ever have 12 in a game, but because I just love them. I love the way they look and I wanna have a lot of them. So it's just the collector in me. So today, what I'm gonna try to do, actually, I'll be right back. I'm gonna show you something that Dan did. Okay, okay. So, Dan recently got the orc fighters. Now, I'm not, I'm not gonna say orcs are easier to paint because Necrons out of everything are probably the easiest to paint for the troops. But when it comes to the vehicles, like you look at this and it looks pretty good. He's, I think he's done a good job. And he's avoided having to highlight every detail, which is really neat. Now the, the, the advantage that orcs have is that their paint job doesn't have to look pristine. Now Necrons, I guess, don't have to, but they kind of seem like they do. They're kind of like the Eldar, that they, at least the way Games Workshop has kind of depicted them is, is much more, you know, as clean cut and everything like that with the way they paint them. Whereas orcs, you can do whatever you want. So all Dan did is he sprayed it, he spray painted it black, and then he put tape down, like masking tape over it, and then he sprayed red. Um, and he was able to shade it with the spray paint. So it's kind of like airbrushing, but kind of the poor man or the lazy man's airbrush. And then he takes the tape off, and then he just, he actually just kind of dry brushed the whole thing with, uh, with iron belcher, is that what, iron breaker, that's what it's called. The, basically the old bulk gun metal. And then I think what really finishes it is he just did a few of these freehanded things. He just kind of freehanded the lightning, uh, some sort of moon, another whatever, and a couple arrows, like nothing too complicated in some checker patterns. And that wouldn't take very long and boom, he's done. Now mind you, he put some detail on the orcs inside of it, which is good. But overall, these were very, very fast for him to paint. He even put a, a bit of detail on on his bomb. These are magnetized, just so you know. And, and it looks great. He's got a blue one right here. Same idea. Just, he spray painted a black, put masking tape over the black. You can see like a piece of masking tape was across here. And then he sprayed it blue, shading the blue a little bit. And then he quickly dry brushed over with bulk on metal. And then he put a few things on it. It's not going to win a golden demon award, but it looks great on the table. So that's what I want. I want something like that, but I can't do it like this necessarily because I don't think this would suit the Necron Flyers. But it still gave me an idea that when you look at the Doom size, they have basically, if you actually look at this, like these in, in the Games Workshop highlights these lines. But also if you look at it, it makes kind of these different panels. So you have a panel here, you have a panel here, you have a panel here, a panel here, a panel there. So I think I'm going to try a couple things today. One. I'm first going to try a two-tone color scheme. Um, let me give you an example of what I mean by that. I don't, it's not necessarily these colors I'm going to go with, but I just want to show you ones in the Necron Codex. Like this one. See how they are blue and gold? Blue and gold. If you actually look closely, if you have the Necron Codex, you realize that he doesn't really, the person who did this army didn't really highlight much. He still highlighted a bit, uh, but not much. So that would have been a very quick, at least I'm assuming, a very quick color scheme to paint. Now, I'm not a big fan of the colors. I don't like the aqua blue with the with the brass, but it's the idea. It's the idea that it's this two-tone thing and it looks complete because if you look at the crevices, they're still black. So if what I do is I take this and I base it black again to get all the crevices nice and dark black, or like pure black, and then I don't spray over it with blue, and then I actually paint the panels, maybe two different colors, maybe one in the middle and one there. I'm not quite sure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it out and see how it looks and see if it looks good. That's the first thing I'm gonna try. If that doesn't work, then I'm gonna try doing a taping method where I, where I paint it one color and then I maybe put a couple pieces of masking tape across, but not not an orky fashion, maybe a, a more, a much more pristine fashion and spraying over it with another color and then freehand on something. I was thinking some sort of pattern, like if you look at the way they painted it, they have this pattern thing right here. That's actually just free handed on, or it might be stenciled on, I'm not quite sure. 
And I, so I want to try something like that, where I'll take a piece of, of board like this, and I'll cut out the shape, and then I'll hold it over it, and I'll spray it. I'm really trying to use spray paints as much as possible here because it's just much faster. So my goal is that each of them can be done within half an hour to an hour, whereas if I highlighted them, it would take me at least an hour just to do the highlighting, and then it wouldn't even look that good. So that's what you're going to see me documenting in this vlog. So I'm going to end here, not the whole vlog. You'll see me come back in a second. You won't even know the passage of time because it's going to be edited. And I'm going to come back. I think I, I think I want to try the masking tape one first. I think I'm going to do that one first because I think that one has more promise in my mind. The other two-tone color, different panels might look a little funky. So I'm going to try that one. So I'll be back in a second and you can see the results. All right, so attempt number one. I have based it black. I'm only going to do the top just to see how it looks. And I've masked it. I'm not sure if I've put too much masking tape on. But I also, while I was waiting for the black to dry, I created a template. This will go with this little piece in the middle to give it at least some freehanded detail. So the pattern would look like this in the end. So I'm going to go spray paint it blue, try to shade it a little bit, and let's see how it looks. All right, so I sprayed it. I guess I'm not confident yet that this is actually going to look good, but we shall see in a second. Sprayed a bunch of blue all over it. I am now on camera going to remove the tape. Now you don't wait a while to take tape off because you want it to be still wet, wouldn't you? Yeah, like when you're taking tape off of, um, when you're like taping your walls before you paint, you want to take that off at, right after you paint. Because if the paint dries, now the spray painting probably is not as big a deal, but if the paint dries when you go to peel it off, it can actually take some paint with it. But in this case, I don't think it matters either way. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Don't think it looks horrible. In fact, this might even look pretty good. Huh. Hmm. Well, that's step one. Step two is to put is to spray the um, the pattern on it with a brighter color, and then step three will be to pick out the the, the metal details. So I think this is coming along. I'm still, you know, it obviously doesn't look done yet, but it does look pretty neat. I'm wondering if that blue is too dark, but maybe once we get the other details on, it'll look better. All right, so I'll be back for you in just a second. So unfortunately, it didn't work very well because this is on an angle and you put the stencil down and you spray over it, the spray still gets in. And you can see that it went right in there and in here as well. This one's worse, I actually got my thumb on it and took some paint off. But you can see that it's nice and crisp on this side because on the this is the first attempt, it's not crisp anywhere. And this attempt I actually pushed the stencil down more on this side but I couldn't get it all the way down because of all this in here stopped it from going down. And um, and so this is crisper, so I might be able to make it work, or I might just need to freehand something on. Maybe freehand a big lightning thing? I'm not sure. So that was attempt number four. I'm going to put this one aside, and I'm going to go spray another one of these black and tape it. Although, now that I've seen this once, um, I think what I'm going to do next time is I'll tape it the same way. I like the way that the, the pattern worked out. But after I spray it blue, I'm going to take the really light blue and just give it a a really quick shade so that it's lighter on the front and darker on top. So I'll be back to show you that. Okay, my cell phone's ringing. Okay, I'm back. All right, so this time I sprayed it the blue and then I took a lighter blue. So I used navy blue as the base blue and then crystal blue, which is just a little lighter. That's the this color right here, just to kind of give it a bit more depth to the blue. So, let's take off the tape and see how it looks. Alright, 
Tere. 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 And da -da -da. So there, see that's a little brighter this time, which I think looks better. Just more tiger stripes. Maybe I don't want it this bright. Maybe the darker is better. So it's not as much of a contrast. Hmm. I don't know. It would kind of be neat either way. All right, so now I'm going to try, I don't know if I'm going to try to stencil it on again, or if I'm just going to try freehanding something, because freehanding doesn't take too long if you keep it simple. I don't know. I'm having a hard time deciding. Because the stenciling didn't work because this isn't flat. This is has this ridge and it goes down on the other side. So I would need to spend a lot more time getting the stencil down where I need it to. But then it gets spray paint all over it and that could make a mess. What time is it? 12 o'clock. All right. So I'll be back and I'll show you whatever I decide. I'll tell you what I've decided. I haven't done it yet. I'm going to actually ignore the freehanding for now. I'm going to get all the other stuff done, which is the metal along here, the guy inside, the brighter blue. The details, these details probably will take me all of 15, 20 minutes to finish for one guy. Kind of funny how much time I'm actually spending just to try to get one done, but it does have a method, or there's a method to my madness because I do plan on doing a lot of these. So once I can perfect it, then I can do a lot of them. And also, I prefer spending all my time figuring out a faster way to do it than doing it a slow way. It's just the way I think. So I'm going to do that and we'll come back and we'll take a look at how finished it looks. Okay, I'm back. And here we are. Now, I think it would be nice if it had something along here, like some sort of freehanded thing, but I'm not confident in my abilities. So you can see that I did. I did the iron breaker along here, iron breaker on the engines, as you can see, iron breaker on these little things. It actually didn't take very long. Um, I'll probably be able to get them done in a half hour each. And then I washed it over with null oil, which is the new bat of black, basically. It's a shade, but it's, you wash the shade. I actually put a bit of red inside the engines here. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that very well, just to make them look like they're glowing. Same thing down here. I attached a death ray just so you can see it. That comes off. So there's a death ray. The bottom is very undetailed because you're never going to see it. You're always going to be seeing it like this or like this. And there's some gray there. So I just been I picked out a bunch of details. Didn't take very long. And I will be the first to agree that somebody else could put a lot more detail on these. I've seen some really cool ones online, but um, the I think the the lines kind of give it enough detail that on camera, when you see six of these, or three of these, or four of these, you're not going to notice that it's missing heavy amounts of detail. And that's really what I'm looking for. So that's how you have to judge it, is, is it enough? I even did these, sorry, the little vents there, they're gray. So I think that's how I'm going to do them all. So I'm going to work on the other five, spray them all black, tape them all up, I'm going to just do them assembly line. And uh, I should probably... Quarter to two right now. I don't think I'll get them all done today, but I'm going to try to. And that way I'll have six doom size, night size. And then after I tackle everything else, I'll probably go back and um, get six more. So it'll be awesome. It actually wasn't very hard to paint the gray in there. So I don't know if I would paint it beforehand because then I'd have to tape it and cover it and everything when I go to spray it. So that's uh, it's debatable. That's what I would say because it really wasn't that hard to get it in there and it wasn't hard to, to not make a mess. So it depends on your own abilities and what you feel confident doing. All right, so uh, this might be the end of the video. I'm not sure if I'm going to come back once I do the rest of them. So if not, we'll see you in the next video and happy wargaming.